Today we've got a great story of malicious compliance against a short-changing company. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, you want HR involved? Yep, you can have HR. This is a story of how hate blinds you. I work in radiology. About 15 plus years ago, I was working with a radiographer, x-ray tech, called Smith. Now, Smith had recently received two official warning of duty, one for abusing the boss and one for abusing me. Smith was told to change their attitude and behave. Smith, however, went on a path of revenge that was endless. I was dying a death of a thousand tiny paper cuts. Nothing terrible, but just lots of little things which I knew Smith had done, but I couldn't prove it. One Monday morning, one of the A&E doctors came over to complain about how poor the x-ray image quality was a couple of nights ago. Smith goes over the roster board and sees my name corresponding to that shift. You worked afternoon shift by yourself. Smith charges into the boss's office demanding a full complaint process. Smith demands, since clearly the boss and I have it in for them, HR should run it independently. The boss tries to talk Smith out of it, but Smith basically says they don't trust the boss to deal with me fairly. The boss then tells Smith that he'll hand it over, but be careful of what you ask for. Apparently Smith was in quite a lather, and so excited that they had got me. Two days later I'm being interviewed by two HR guys and an independent chief radiographer from another hospital. We go through each of the images, and I agree, the work is really poor. It's clear no one has actually looked too carefully at the paperwork with the x-ray images. The HR guy finally asks, why did you do such poor work? I reply I didn't, and if they bothered to look on the online pay system, I had called in sick that day. In fact, Smith had done the overtime shift. They looked stunned. I reminded them I expected the same process for Smith. I also lodged an official complaint about false allegations made by Smith for this case. Apparently Smith tried to stick to the roster, but they showed Smith their payslip plus that they had signed off on all the images. While HR was deciding what to do with Smith, fire them or not, Smith had two more incidents at work and was eventually fired. You gotta love when someone targeting another coworker accidentally takes themselves out in the process. Our next story is, this was a test? This may not quite fit, but I was just reminded of it. Many moons ago, I took a job as a technician at an engineering company. They needed someone who could be sent out to do reworks in the field, test, find solutions, etc. And when not away, help in the electrical shop, building panels and the like. The other guys in there are panel wiremen, skilled and good at what they do, but don't necessarily have any idea how the building works or why. I'm an electrician by trade, so I'm quite comfortable with both aspects of the job. First day there, I'm familiarizing, and then given a folder of schematics and a kit to assemble a control panel. No problem. I get to marking out, lay out and assemble the back plate, finding out where everything is stored. Then I get to wiring it up, and it's wrong. Various mistakes from switches wired the wrong way to components connected backwards or out of sequence. There were three things on the first page alone. I went to the supervisor and explained the problems. He told me to red pen the changes and continue. So I thought, ah, this is a test and went along with it. Page after page needed changes. It was a mess, but once I finished, I was satisfied I'd gotten them all and let the supervisor know I was finished and thought it was a really clever way to test out new hires. And did he want me to dismantle it now for the next guy? He looked blank, then flicked through the drawing, smiled maliciously and rang someone. Ten minutes later, the designer came in, came over to the bench I was tidying up with his prototype panel sitting on it, and asked if it was ready to test and ship. My turn to look a little blank as I thought it was the test rig. I said something along the lines of, you're actually going to use it? Up pops the supervisor with the schematic covered in red ink and a malicious grin, happy to explain to the design engineer that there were so many screw-ups on his schematic that I thought they were testing me. The supervisor proved to be a real cantankerous jerk and was delighted to get to throw things back at the design office, and that particular design engineer had been a regular problem. Honestly, I think this guy needed it. Some people just need to be humbled in one way or another. This next story is New Job Bait and Switch. I worked for a national home improvement store, the blue one. When I interviewed, I applied for the sales position in plumbing, no longer exists. 
It was Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, with a commission program. Since I had years of plumbing experience, I was offered the job. The day I started, I was told the sales job went to an internal promotion. Only thing they could offer me was part-time. Lower hourly rate, no commission, had to work alternating weekends. I was young and had a new baby, so I said sure, as long as I could go full-time in a few months with weekend off. My manager agreed. Fast forward three months, not a word has been said. The guy who got the sales job, an electrician, asked me questions about plumbing all day. I asked my department manager about full-time, a sales job, anything. Sorry, nothing available. I reminded him of what I was hired for, the schedule I was promised, the pay I was originally offered. They reply, if you don't like it, look for another job. Jobs at the time were hard to come by, but a job that was available, in that store even, was a stocking job. This position was always available as the pay wasn't great and it was a lot of physical work, but the hours were Monday to Friday full time, so I applied for that. When I interviewed, my manager found out. He went to HR to stop me from transferring. I informed HR that if the position didn't get filled and I was excluded from transferring, I would file a complaint. So I got the job. Fast forward two months and the quarter ends. No actual plumber in the department meant sales dropped. So the manager didn't get his bonus. He now begs me to come back. No thanks, I'm making more money on Saturday doing side jobs than I made Monday to Friday. So he asks, what can I do to get you back in plumbing? I gave him a ridiculous price. He laughs and says, that's more than I make. Oh well. Fast forward three more months, store manager doesn't get her bonus because plumbing hasn't made budget in two quarters in a row. Time to fix the problem. I get called into a meeting with store manager and department manager. Store manager says, what will it take you to get you back in plumbing? I say, stupid salary. The department manager says, I told you, not reasonable. The store manager says, give us a minute please. I stand up to leave and they say, oh, no, I'm sorry, I meant department manager should leave. Department manager with a surprised Pikachu face. The store manager says, if I pay you, then you'll have to work weekends. We're busiest on weekends. I say, I'll do Saturday, with every Sunday and Monday off. No rotating days off like before, and I get my commission back. They say, done. You cannot talk about your rate. I am the only person in the store making more than this. I say, well, I can, but I won't. The look on the department manager's face when we came out was priceless. If he had only given me the job I was hired for originally. When betting on yourself pays off, know your worth. Love watching people succeed like that. Our next story is, help yourself to anything in the office? Okay. When I was between undergrad and grad school, I worked for a year as a secretary in a wealth management firm. Now, if you're like me and thinking, what is that? The answer is that it's a bunch of suck-up wannabe stockbrokers that mostly kiss butt of ultra-wealthy people and do kitschy things like golf with them and throw them elaborate holiday parties so that they can take a percentage scraping of their portfolio's interest that year. Sounds harsh, I know, but these are not high-yield or unstable portfolios that require a lot of tending. These are, here's $40 million, please put it in a low-risk investment account and send me the interest as my annual income, plus half a percentage or whatever for yourself. Most accounts were reviewed annually. Now, I was 23 or 24, and a woman. I was younger than most of the partner's children, which made me the perfect target for all sorts of grunt work sexist bs and being hit on things like take my car to be washed or go buy me a salad and pick yourself up something sweet bring me a coffee and crawl under my desk to fix my printer pick up my dry cleaning buy my kids christmas gifts oh your hair is so soft i like the way that dress looks on your body some aspects of my job required data entry spreadsheets and basic excel basic budget and finance Outlook, and client relations. For example, making coffee for the wealthy people and offering to change the TV channel in the lobby. I made $18 an hour and I'll happily admit all my work for the entire week could be accomplished in two hours in one day or in 20 minutes every morning. This led to me writing a lot of fan fiction. 
devouring PDFs of books for hours. I read all 42 Discworld novels back to back, and just generally clicking through popular social media of the day. Mid-year, the entire office staff, 15 to 20 people, including the only other two women in the office, office manager and marketing person, a wife, both 50s, flew from the US to the UK to woo a huge, super wealthy client. There was absolutely no need to take everyone, but the head owner of this firm who I'll call Howie Jim, and willingly went by his first and middle name and abbreviated to HJ unironically, decided that it would be a good morale boost and bonding experience for everyone. Partners were also encouraged to bring spouses and children as desired. Everyone was excited to go. Everyone, of course, but me. Oh, a ton of excuses were made. This is a family trip, and this trip was planned a year ago before you were here. And all of these people are paying for their families. It would be unfair if you were paid for by the company, etc., etc., but the reality is, there would be zero excuse for me to do anything on the trip except order more company lunches and chauffeur them. Delightful as traveling would be, the idea of traveling with 60 plus year old wealthy jerks as their built in on call servant was not enticing. I honestly genuinely didn't care, but everyone walked on eggshells like I might start crying because I was so excluded. The only thing they wanted me to do while they were gone was unlock the building, sit there for business hours or turn away anyone who came in, and lock up again. 10 hours to be sure, but I could literally watch Netflix or read or even Skype people the entire time. As a last ditch attempt at comfort, HJ told me before he left that I should help myself to anything I wanted in the office. What he meant was coffee creamer, stale muffins, office supplies. What he didn't think about? The customer gift closet. Now see, in even more blatant attempts to suck up to rich people, this firm has an entire closet full of embroidered and personalized gifts that we assured clients we had made just for them. When a client left their annual review, they would leave with a gift bag full of goodies that I put together for them. Now, if I really wanted to be good at my job, I would have suggested taking notes on favorite candy, hobbies, names of children, etc. But the gifts weren't actually personalized. That would be too much work. In reality, we just had a bunch of A to Z branded things, lettered marble coasters, Sherpa blankets, silver picture frames, desk clocks, bronze desk statues of famous American war heroes, ash or jewelry trays, whiskey glasses, and other pointless BS. So I complied with HJ's suggestion and helped myself. I found the key to the closet and had a good time looking through it and shaking my head at some of the insane stuff they bought. To be honest, I could have stolen it all or whatever, but since I still continued to work there for another six months, and because I knew what HJ meant, and because even though I was feeling fed up and petty, I was, hopefully am, still a fairly rule-abiding person. I didn't take clocks or silver picture frames. Also, they had the stupid firm's logo on them, so no thanks. I didn't even take a Sherpa blanket, though I really wanted one. It was like a $200 blanket. Instead, I took a small stack of marble coasters with the initial of my first name. I've seen similar stacks of marble at Tile Depot warehouses selling for around $8. It's been almost 10 years and I still have three of the four. One did break at some point. They were very faded, water stained, and the letters almost completely rubbed off, but I still love them. Listen, they have an entire closet full of the stuff. I'm sure they won't even notice it was missing. That said, our final story of the day is, won't pay allowances? Then fly me home. I once built electrical substations in Australia. These jobs were mostly away from home and included some hefty tax-free allowances. We would typically be there for a short amount of time and have to pay short-term accommodation costs, which were high, in a motel and eat in restaurants or get takeaway, as there were no kitchens. The rate was $130 a day, $910 a week, and the incentive was that you could keep what you don't spend. Enter Project Manager. You're only working five days a week, so you only get five days of allowances. Okay, project manager. Then what happens on weekends where I'm still in a motel seven hours drive from home? Not my problem. 
I ring head office in front of the project manager and say, I'm going to need taxi to the airport on Friday, flights and taxi home in the city, and then a return journey on Monday, which means I should get to site lunchtime on Monday. Project manager gets pissed and tries to have his cake and eat it. Head office asks project manager what the freak he's thinking, as standard procedure is to pay weekends and maximize time on site. The project manager didn't want to pay overtime. Long story short is I get 7 days allowance, meet a mature age apprentice on site, and offer to pay half his and girlfriend's rent, 200 a week. They both don't get paid much, so I also buy half groceries. Result is cheap rent, cheap well prepared meals, and somewhere to chill on when not working. Special bonus story, the site was actually two sites, and I was running the bigger one as it was less complex, and the foreman ran the other one. Every Saturday we would collect a few dollars each and put on a barbecue at each location. Foreman was tight as freak and used to buy cheap meat and buns for his side. I used to reach into my own pocket to make up the difference and get the apprentice to buy top quality eye filet and nice fresh bakery buns, avocado and all the trimmings. Everyone would then come back to the big site, mine, for the Saturday safety meeting. The other site team would see leftover eye fillets, smashed avocado spread, and three times drinks and ice. All the big side guys are sitting straining under their 2x eye fillet burgers and sodas. Cue the other foreman getting crap for buying cheap meat and no salad or sauces. Ah, good times. Seriously, that site was stressful as crap. These small things gave the team a laugh and took the pressure off. Honestly, overall, it sounds like OP's a pretty good guy to work with. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome story of compliance, why not check out that video on the left? Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.